Hello, uh, my name is uh, David Villar and uh, welcome to this uh, presentation uh, where I would like to start by asking you whether uh, you think that uh, uh, systemic antimicrobials are really ne needed uh, to treat uh, superficial skin infections. Antimicrobials are uh, those uh, type of drugs that are not used in a very selective manner for situations in which uh, they are cl clearly uh, needed. I will not be the one denying that I have uh, prescribed them just in case an infection was uh, present. Uh, but really the problem goes uh, much further in that probably many uh, veterinarians have been using them, if not as uh, placebos, at least as innocuous uh, medications, or maybe uh, because of uh, pressure by the owners uh, to satisfy their expectations and somehow uh, keep the business uh, running without a real rationale for uh, using them. So I hope this uh, presentation will help you uh, realize uh, some of the problems that may come from not using them uh, wisely uh, we should uh, consider them a really, truly valuable medical resource uh, that we should uh, consider as a real treasure uh, to keep in our uh, medical cabinets. So we, before we get into the uh, specifics of uh, therapy uh, for uh, pyoderma, I want to point out that uh, in 2015, a AVMA uh, put together a task force on antimicrobial stewardship in companion animal practice uh, to provide some guidance on the use of antimicrobials in light of the emerging impact of uh, multi-resistant organisms, uh, which are appearing, and I will show you uh, on this uh, presentation for skin disease. As you can see, they developed some uh, general uh, do's and don'ts on antimicrobial uh, prescribing. Uh, here they show what are the most typical conditions for which uh, systemic antimicrobials are uh, prescribed in practice. And in the case of uh, skin conditions, uh, we are going to see that uh, the topical uh, therapy is a better alternative in most cases uh, to using systemic uh, treatment. Uh, I will address in uh, future videos uh, the other conditions like uh, respiratory or, or uh, urinary or GI disease. Uh, but many of the points uh, that they raise here is that maybe antimicrobials are not the answer to many of these uh, problems uh, for which uh, we tend to use them. So it's uh, probably time to think out of the box, uh, so to speak, and wise up a little bit on this issue. And uh, the same story uh, could be said for uh, cats uh, with some slight uh, peculiarities that they also uh, highlight on this uh, other slide. Anyway, uh, going back to uh, canine uh, superficial uh, bacterial uh, folliculitis, uh, which is the same as uh, superficial pyoderma, uh, this is probably one of those uh, diseases uh, for which uh, more systemic antimicrobials have been uh, traditionally uh, prescribed uh, in dogs. Uh, and this is uh, actually the main problem which is uh, highlighted uh, on this uh, article which uh, was put together by the working group of, of the International Society for Companion Animal uh, on Infectious uh, Diseases. And the other problem uh, that they identified is that there is uh, increased uh, concerns uh, regarding the widespread uh, of uh, resistant uh, bacteria infecting dogs and cats. And this is uh, particularly so with this uh, meticillin resistant Staphylococcus uh, zero is intermediates. And the fact that uh, some of these uh, superbugs are not responding to, to some of the major uh, groups of antimicrobials uh, is really a strong stimulus uh, to use a, topic, a topical approach, as uh, we will see in a minute. Uh, we're going to see uh, some studies in which uh, the general use of antimicrobials is actually a risk uh, factor for the emergence of these uh, methicillin-resistant uh, Staphylococcus pseudo-intermediates. And in fact, there is a strong uh, compelling evidence uh, that using uh, them will actually increase uh, the carriage of this uh, opportunist in dogs, uh, just as, as it has been uh, showing in, in people. So if we, if we look at this uh, large uh, epidemiological study uh, in which they uh, wanted to find out what were the most uh, uh, common uh, prescribing practices uh, in uh, primary care uh, veterinary uh, practitioners in the UK, uh, they uh, did a, a survey, as you can see, uh, in dogs uh, diagnosed uh, with uh, bacterial pyoderma. And out of uh, 683 dogs, uh, as you can see, 64% were prescribed uh, systemic antimicrobials uh, with no topical medication. 
27% uh, got both uh, systemic and topical, and only 47 uh, got topical without systemic medication. And if we look at this other slide, uh, at which uh, type of antimicrobials uh, were given systemically, uh, the combination of amoxicillin clavulanic acid uh, was the most frequent, uh, followed with uh, cephalexin. Uh, both of these uh, are uh, uh, broad spectrum uh, beta lactams. And then the third one was uh, clindamycin. Uh, these are all kind of first choices uh, for treatment of uh, superficial pyoderma, if you look at any uh, textbooks. Uh, the other thing they found out in this uh, survey is that uh, bacterial uh, cultures and sensitivity testing uh, were only done in 2% of all these uh, study cases. And as uh, we will see in a minute, uh, the recommendation uh, uh, nowadays are going to be to move away from uh, using systemic antimicrobials if you can uh, rely on, uh, on uh, using topical uh, uh, approach. And when we need to uh, resort to systemic treatment, to do so based on a uh, susceptibility test uh, instead of uh, an empirical uh, treatment. So before we say anything about the recommended uh, ther therapy, obviously making a diagnosis uh, is going to be the first thing. And this is going to be based on the typical lesions that are shown here. And ideally, you want to back up this uh, with some uh, cytology to strengthen your diagnosis and uh, may also tell you if you have some other uh, co-infections uh, with uh, yeast, uh, dermatophytes, uh, maybe a mange. Usually, the presence of uh, inflammatory cells uh, with uh, intracellular uh, cocci is, uh, tends to be a definitive uh, diagnosis. Uh, but uh, just remember, if uh, the absence uh, of this uh, does not rule out a bacterial infection, uh, you usually uh, characteristic lesions are, tend to be the presence of uh, papules, which are those uh, reddish uh, or pink small bumps uh, that you tend to see on, on many rushes. And usually uh, those uh, come along with uh, pustules, which is kind of the medical term for the classical pimples that are filled with that uh, yellowish uh, liquid pus. Uh, that's uh, basically made up of uh, white blood cells that are sent by the body to fight the infection. And uh, sometimes uh, those uh, pustules uh, will rupture and they tend to leave a round lesion with a rim of a scale or a peeling edge, if you like, that gives them the name of uh, epidermal uh, colorets. And those are also kind of a footprint of a pyoderma. So once we have made a diagnosis, uh, the recommendations uh, for treatment of uh, superficial uh, pyoderma, as I say, are basically different from the traditional reliance on, on systemic empirical uh, uh, treatment, particularly in the face of more uh, methicillin-resistant uh, Staphylococcus uh, serointermediates. So uh, guess what? Yes, you're going to have to uh, roll out uh, your sleeves uh, because there is going to be a strong emphasis on uh, topical uh, therapy. It, this uh, has been uh, largely uh, underused, uh, as you uh, saw in the previous uh, uh, epidemiological study, and it really has a lot of uh, advantages. Uh, here we have a table that summarizes uh, the antiseptic agents uh, for use in, ex in extensive or uh, generalized uh, disease. And as you can see, they may come as uh, shampoos, a spray, rinses, uh, lotions, uh, conditioners. And you also have those that, that uh, come as uh, gels, uh, creams, ointments, uh, lotions, wipes, uh, in case you have a more uh, localized uh, infection. So as you can see, uh, uh, some of the active ingredients uh, uh, are usually the same. You have uh, chlorhexidine. Uh, benzoyl peroxide, uh, fusidic acid, uh, mupirocin, uh, and they just obviously uh, usually suggest to uh, uh, use them for uh, seven days uh, beyond the resolution of all the lesions. And uh, obviously you might want to keep the hair coat as short as you can uh, to assist uh, optimal contact uh, with of the chemical with the skin uh, surface. So now that we know what uh, the panel uh, uh, suggests uh, to do first, uh, how about uh, choosing an antimicrobial systemically if you decide to go that uh, route or uh, you cannot treat uh, topically for uh, whatever reason? 
Well, uh, here there, there are really no uh, comp comprehensive uh, guidelines uh, to base uh, your decision. Uh, so uh, they basically came up with a, a tier uh, system to select uh, your drugs. As a first uh, choice, and based on a systemic review, it was found that uh, sevofacine is uh, actually uh, one of the drugs that has shown uh, excellent uh, efficacy. However, uh, this is a critically important antimicrobial, according to uh, uh, World Health Organization, so it should probably be reserved in case uh, you don't have any uh, better options. Uh, and as you can see, uh, most uh, cephalosporins are actually included as a first or second tier uh, antimicrobials. Uh, there was really no uh, consensus uh, by the panel uh, in which uh, group to include them. Uh, the other two first choices uh, for empirical uh, treatment of uh, superficial pyoderma are uh, amoxicillin and uh, clavulanic acid, clindamycin or uh, lincomycin and the combo of uh, trimethapine and a sulfa uh, drug. So uh, uh, when culture and susceptibility testing is available or uh, the first tier drugs are uh, not available for you, uh, you may consider uh, using the second tier drugs. And as you can see, those include uh, the fluoroquinolones, the aminoglycosides, uh, you have uh, doxycycline, chloramphenicol, uh, rifampicin, and uh, finally, uh, the third tier drugs, those uh, tend to be discouraged because they, those are usually uh, reserved for treatment of uh, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus infections in humans. So uh, the next question that, you may, that we may ask is uh, how common is it to encounter uh, methicillin resistant uh, intermediates in dogs? Well, that depends a lot on the history on that animal. So if we look at this uh, case control study, um, here they had a population of dogs that uh, had skin infection uh, with the Staphylococcus cereal intermediates. Uh, they could identify them in either uh, methicillin resistant or uh, susceptible. Uh, the cases were uh, the resistant ones and those were matched by hospital and time with two control susceptible individuals. And their results uh, of the study were that uh, the dogs that uh, were resistant to uh, Staphylococcus uh, were 8.5 times, 8 .5 times uh, more likely to have received uh, antimicrobials uh, 30 days prior to the hospital admission. And as I said on the previous video, uh, when you administer uh, antimicrobials to an animal, you will create resistance in the normal or commensal microflora, usually in the, in the gut and the skin. Uh, so here you go. Now uh, those uh, staphylococcus uh, on the skin of these uh, dogs that had received uh, antimicrobials within a month uh, have uh, now become re resistant. So the next question is that uh, would come to mind is uh, how do we go about treating these uh, methicillin resistant staphylococcus uh, uh, serial intermediates? So if we look at uh, this other uh, article by these uh, two authors, uh, the treatment is basically uh, follows the same principles uh, as those of uh, susceptible uh, um, skin ones. Uh, with the exceptions that they suggest to combine systemic and topical therapy. Uh, for the systemic antimicrobials, as you can see, they, they stay away from the beta-lactams, and they actually include most of the drugs uh, from the second-tier group that we just mentioned earlier. Basically, uh, chloramphenicol at the highest uh, dose uh, range of uh, 50 uh, milligrams per kilogram three times a day in dogs. Uh, you can also go with uh, rifampicin, amicacin, uh, minocycline, or uh, clindamycin. Uh, with regards to uh, topical therapy, ideally you you probably want to clip the hair coat first. And if you can use a medicated shampoo for 10 minutes uh, contact time, uh, that's a, a great option with either uh, chlorhexidine or uh, benzoyl peroxide or uh, ethyl uh, lactate. And you want to do though, uh, that for at least uh, three times a week. If we were to summarize everything that we just said, I guess the first thing would be to ask ourselves if we're actually confronting just the bioderma or there are some underlying conditions 
Uh, you want to make sure that uh, to rule out al allergies, uh, hyperthyroidism, uh, mange, uh, dermatophytes. The second thing would be to can we actually uh, perform uh, cultures and susceptibility testing on those animals. Uh, just remember that uh, most uh, superficial pyodermas are going to respond uh, more rapidly to uh, topical therapy with uh, antiseptics, but uh, the therapy must be done correctly. And if it needs to be uh, generalized, ideally it should be done with a shampoo and having uh, clipped the hair of the animal where, where it's uh, necessary. And because nowadays uh, many dogs have received antimicrobials, uh, they may be uh, carrying these uh, methicillin resistant uh, Staphylococcus intermediates. And in that, in that case, uh, if you decide to go with a systemic antimicrobial, you may want to do so based on a susceptibility test. And if you don't have that option, uh, just remember uh, to go with the second tier uh, antimicrobials. Uh, chloramphenicol uh, is one of those options that they uh, recommend it. And again, uh, go, uh, always uh, try to combine it with uh, topical antiseptic. And finally, uh, we should probably reserve uh, systemic antimicrobials uh, for situations uh, in which uh, you cannot uh, uh, treat uh, topically or topical treatment is not enough to clear the infection on its own uh, or it cannot be uh, correctly applied for uh, whatever uh, reason. So again, uh, thanks for uh, your attention. I hope this uh, presentation was uh, helpful. So until next time, uh, bye-bye.